Hello and welcome to the first ever video of the Immigrant Programmer channel. So today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about TypeScript 4.0, its new features, improvements and breaking changes if any. But before I get into it, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Pranav and I'm the co-host of the Immigrant Programmer channel. I came to Canada in 2017 as an international student to pursue my master's in computer science. Since then, I have been working as a teaching assistant, as a software developer, as an AI engineer, and currently as a full stack web developer in a very cool company near Montreal. So let me tell you who is the audience for this video. Anyone who has a basic knowledge of JavaScript or TypeScript, this video is really for you. All my Angular developers, all my fellow Angular developers out there, I give you a high five. You know we react better than the React developers, no pun intended. And on a serious note, you know that TypeScript is the foundation of Angular. We are already at Angular version 10 and I guess 11 is right around the corner. And as Angular developers, it's our duty to keep ourselves up to date with TypeScript so that we can write code that is not really outdated and we can leverage all the new features that Microsoft and the TypeScript team are working on every day to make our lives better. Also, it's for any programmer who likes to be up to date. When I started learning programming, whether it was JavaScript or learning frameworks like Angular or React, etc., there are plenty of resources out there which tells you how to learn it, how to get started, and there are numerous videos and courses you can find online. But what is missing, what I personally feel as a programmer is missing on the web is how to keep yourself up to date. There are so many things on how to get started, but as we learn, as I personally learned Angular 5, Angular 7 was already out, so I was already outdated. So the goal of this channel is to keep you up to date to all the programming languages, all the programming frameworks, that really matter so that you don't have to so that you don't feel outdated so let's get into what is typescript so let me very quickly cover in less than 30 seconds of what is typescript for those who don't know what it is it's a language that builds on top of javascript it basically adds syntax for our static types now what does that mean the idea is to use TypeScript to basically type check our code and tell you the mistakes before you run our code. For example, in a JavaScript environment, you might write let a is equal to cat. Now, in the next line, you can write a is equal to 24 and no one is going to stop you, not your compiler, not your uh, IDE, and neither will you know it yourself unless the code breaks because you were expecting a string and you got an integer and you will only know it in post-production and it is really hard to find. So basically the goal of TypeScript is to avoid those errors, avoid those obvious mistakes, make our code cleaner and more readable. So the first change I'm most excited about is labeled tuple elements. Now those who are not new to programming, they know that we can pass tuples as variable number of arguments to any function so that the function can be really dynamic. Now TypeScript supports it, supports it from the very beginning, but what changed? TypeScript had a support, for example, in this function foo, we had two arguments. First one should be a string and second one should be a number. Now it appears no different than this function below. Uh, it basically means that argument zero is a string and argument one is a number. Okay, first let me tell you, this is already much better than JavaScript. You know why? Because in JavaScript, you won't know if we have to pass a string first and a number second. So at least that is cleared out. Now, what is better in TypeScript 4.0 and that is we can name the tuples. So for example, we had to define the range. We can actually say that the first variable is named start, is labeled as start and the second one is end. This greatly increases the readability of the code. Now let me give you a better example for this. So here I've prepared a very basic example for you of tuples in JavaScript, in TypeScript and how they changed in the new version. So let's see the first example over here. I have named this function or method address JS so that it's pretty obvious that it's JavaScript. Now here, as you see, we have a tuple, uh, basically variable number of arguments and 
we can pass anything over here as you can see i have passed 2505 as a first argument which is an integer and sherbrooke east as a second one as a string now in the very next line you can see that i pass a string a number and another number now it's obvious you can see the problem here that any programmer who has seen this code for the first time who has seen the method for the first time cannot imagine what kind of variables what kind of arguments what type of arguments we are expecting over here now let's go to the second one here we see that we have passed arguments but the first one has to be a number and the second one has to be a string that's great we have solved the problem we can see that this one works the second line where we try to pass a third one failed because we have only defined the first two also the third one failed because we need a second argument as well these things are pretty obvious address ts and address 2 these both of these functions are pretty similar they are they really don't change anything now what's new in TypeScript 4.0 we can basically define or label our arguments we can say that the first one should be a street number and the second one should be a street name now it's pretty obvious in the in the previous examples it was not obvious to a programmer if he should pass a uh, apartment number as a uh, as a first argument and a city as a second argument or or a street number or a street name they can be various examples and there can be a lot of confusion around it so i have said that this method accepts a street address now street address can either have a street number and street name or it can have a street number street name and a city now it's pretty pretty clear it's pretty neat and i think it will help when we have a large code base in big companies we have thousands of lines of code and if these things can make life of programmers easy and better then why not implement them i mean we don't have to rely on documentation or comments this this kind of code is pretty readable we can actually read through the code and it would be pretty obvious what kind of arguments we need to pass so I think this feature is pretty neat. And in the end, if we really want to leverage the variable number of arguments we want to pass, we can still say that the first one has to be a street number, which will be a number type. The second one has to be a string. And the third one, well, they can have as many arguments as we want to have of any type. So we can still leverage the variable number of arguments or the tuple feature with a few types and few labels, which can make lives of programmer better. Well, the next thing is class property inference from constructors. That's a lot of fancy words, so I'll just simplify it for you. So basically, in a, in a situation like this, where you define a class square with area and site length, but you didn't give types. Now, TypeScript can use the control flow to analyze what the type of these variables are. For example, it sees that in the constructor you passed a number, and then you assigned the number and did some manipulation on it and assigned it to the area as well. But TypeScript is smart enough to know that it's still a number and it will assume that your variables are numbers. However, it has a limitation. Just so you know, for example, in this case, it's assigned inside an if condition, as you can see over here, if math.random. So in this case, TypeScript compiler, you know, we have to be fair to it. It's obvious that it won't know for concrete it won't know for sure that the type of this variable is now number or not because there's there's a potential for it to be undefined it can be undefined it's an if condition and it's almost impossible for any compiler to know it beforehand so the next one is short circuiting assignment operators you might have seen this syntax which is basically short circuiting a plus equal b means a is equal to a plus b now that's pretty old news what's new here but TypeScript 4, they announced that now we have three new assignment operators, and equal, or equal, and question mark equal. So basically, we could replace these assignments to the new ones. And it's, it's shorter. A every programmer likes shorter code. And, but personally, I don't think I will be using this a lot because I don't really assign the variable, change it, and assign it back to the original one. And the and or and question mark property i don't really use them a lot in my code however if you see the new uh, assignment operators in any code base you will remember that you saw it 
in the immigrant programmers video for TypeScript and then I'll be very happy about it. On this note, I would really, really request you to like the video, share it to all your fellow programmers who you think might benefit with the new features that I explain in this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done it. So what do we have here? We have unknown on catch clause bindings. It basically means that earlier, if we had a try and a catch block, we don't know what type X is. It can be of type any. We can call different methods. We can call methods that were supposed to be called for strings. We can do operations that were supposed to be for integers only. And we can even call this and it won't throw an error before, it, uh, before the code actually executes. Now, we have a type unknown that we can define that we can assign to the exception over here. Now, if we try to say e dot to uppercase, now to uppercase is usually used on a string. The compiler will throw an error because it doesn't know that type unknown has this method or has this property. So instead, we have to narrow it down. We have to say if the type of exception is a string, only then we can call it. Now this, this can be pretty handy because you don't want errors or exceptions in your catch code. I mean, that would be pretty hazardous for your code. So moving on, there are some editor improvements. As you know, uh, if you're new to uh, optional chaining, uh, we had to write a and an a dot b dot c and an and etc. You already know it, it's painful. We can basically use the new feature in Visual Studio Code and simply do a select that code, do a right click on it and basically say it to convert it to optional chaining and here it is. So in the end, I just want to mention that there's no major breaking change with this release. So you can simply update the TypeScript version in your code bases and you're good to go. You, sh you should not be worried about it and it will start improving your code experience and you can start using the new cool features that I just told you about. So uh, if you really made it to the end of this video, I'm really thankful for your time. I hope this video helped you in some way or the other and uh, please subscribe to our channel. Please like our videos. It would really keep us motivated and we would keep creating great content for you and keep you updated with all the new programming languages, all the new features and libraries that might make your lives easier as a developer. So thank you.